got a little mix-up. Carries caveats and a triumph. How's that? Um, short sales. A topic that's been in the news, in the papers, online, uh, you name it, you can find information about short sales. So had an awesome success, a triumph, in that uh, a client of mine who put in an offer on a short sale um, actually six months ago but started the actual full loan process four months ago, finally closed last week. Um, so a full four months in loan processing, waiting for bank approval. Uh, there were two banks, a first mortgage and a second mortgage, that needed to approve this short sale. Now remember, a short sale is when the seller of a property still owns the property, but they need to convince their bank, their, their current mortgage company, to accept less than what they owe on the home. This process is nothing short. Short sale is actually an oxymoron. There's nothing short about a short sale transaction other than the amount of money that the bank is taking in on the seller's side. So in this particular situation, there were many, many ups and downs. Um, and that's, I guess, my caveat side of this. Ultimately, these clients got their home and it was truly by the skin of their teeth on the last day of the third extension for the first mortgage while the second mortgage company went back and forth. And they actually came to the table with more money than they anticipated coming with when they started this process four full months ago. Um, but they got their dream home. The caveat side is if you're heading into a short sale, buckle up. The road could be long and bumpy, and you need to be prepared for that. Short sales are not for the faint of heart. You truly need to be prepared for um, delays, for things to not look the way you thought they might originally look, for silence, to hear nothing from the other side, because your real estate agent and in fact the listing agent may be hearing absolutely nothing from one or both banks and it truly is a waiting game. You don't want to get into a short sale situation if you have a lease that's expiring and you need to be out and you don't have an alternative place to live or if you can't exude absolute patience and waiting and thirdly I have seen a few too many times, this is an example of a triumph, but I have seen a number of times where at the end, the bank comes back and absolutely says no to the initial offer and wants substantially more, as they did in this circumstance, but my client had the ability to come with that extra money. Many clients don't have the ability to come with that extra money, so that could have been a bad ending four months later. You need to be prepared and not be too emotionally tied. If you can handle all of those aspects, fantastic. Let's go for the ride. But if not, you may want to look at traditional sellers or bank-owned properties in today's market.